Hi there. Um, this is a video I'm going to attempt to make about reciprocal functions and everything to do with MATLAB 5B and pre-calc. I'm not feeling very well, so I might have a coffee fit in the middle of this, and I'm making it up as I go, so it should be amusing. What I have on the screen is a function that I've just pulled out of my head and said, okay, let's work with f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 7. Uh, linear function is here to do as reciprocal functions. So I'm guessing most of you can follow how that was done in the textbook. Quadratics get a little bit messier, um, but not once you think about what's really happening. So we have a function. That f of x thing at the beginning just says, hey, this is a function that eats x's. That's really all it means. We feed it x's and it spits out y values. So if it makes more sense to your brain to write this as y equals, go ahead and do that. They mean the same thing. So now what we're to do is to fill out this chart and come up with a graph. Whoops. And I was playing in my brain here. We'll get rid of some of that. Um, I'm not going to do all of the graphing on this page because drawing on my tablet is ridiculous. I will switch to Desmos to show you part of it so you can really see what's going on. Normally, or what we've done in the past, <clears throat> with a question like this is that I would ask you, where is the vertex? It's still worth looking at. Where is the vertex? So we complete the square. Half of 6 is 3, squared is 9. So I end up with that, which tells me that my vertex is at negative 3, negative 2. So I can go ahead and put a point at negative 3, negative 2. I know this opens up from there. So um, there's going to be two x-intercepts, for instance. There's definitely going to be a y-intercept, which we have to find for this chart. Um, what else do we know? We know domain because it's a parabola. We know domain is x is all of the real numbers because that curve is going to keep getting wider and wider. If you listed every ordered pair, the x values would include every number. The range are also real numbers, but they're limited because this parabola starts at negative 2 at its lowest and goes up from there, all of the y values are greater than or equal to negative 2. So far, so good. That's stuff you all know how to do. Let's do some more you already know how to do. And on a test, this is important. If you look at this question and go, holy cow, I don't get it, do what you can. The easiest thing in the world to find is a y-intercept <clears throat> because you do it by setting x equal to 0 which takes away all of the, the messy part of this question. So instead of a quadratic, you have that, which is just 7. So my y-intercept is at 0, 7. And you'll notice when I fill in the chart, I use ordered pairs. They have round brackets, otherwise it's a list of numbers. Use points like that, and it'll help make sure you put the points in the right place, and it'll help make sure your brain remembers x before y, x before y, x before y when you write those points x-intercepts, similar process, but a little more involved. We set y equal to 0. And now there are lots of ways you've looked at how to try and solve a quadratic. If you can't see how to factor it right now, meaning I know that this is x plus 3 times x plus 2 or something, don't waste time sitting there thinking about it. <coughs> I'm going to, and because there's an x and an x squared term, I can't just solve by isolating my squared. I'm going to go ahead right away and grab my quadratic formula. And fill that in. So the negative of b is negative 6 plus or minus 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times 1 times 7. And on the bottom, I will just have 2. So negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 8. And I'm going to go a little bit further than we might, only because I have to put this on a graph. So 2 goes into all three of these terms. Remember, that's a term, that's a term, and that's a term. And they are all divisible by 2. So I end up with negative 3 plus or minus root 2 as my x-intercepts. Now, where are those? If you grab your calculator and just say, hey, I want to go negative 3 plus root 2.
I get something like that. And I want to go negative 3 minus root 2. And I get something like that. So I have somewhere about there and somewhere about there. My pen is bigger than my graph paper. My x-intercepts. So I could draw that curve now, but I'm going to go up here while I'm at it. And my x-intercepts, to be really proper about them, I would go like this. And that technically lists them both because of that plus or minus in there. So now to show you what that means on a graph that you can actually see, I'm going to hop to Desmos where I've already got this graph. So there's our curve. There's our intercept at the bottom at negative 3, negative 2. We've got an x-intercept at negative 4.40, an x-intercept at negative 1. Point. That matches everything that we found. So there's our curve. Whoa. No, this way. There we go. Now, we're supposed to look, excuse me, at invariant points and then the reciprocal function. Invariant points are points that are in the same, that don't move. When we take a reciprocal, we put one over something. When we take a reciprocal of a graph, if you can see what I've got typed here in Desmos, I'm taking one over whatever y is or whatever y equals. So if you think about it, if you walked your way along this curve and took the y values do, 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 and put one over them, that's where the points land for the next curve. So here, at negative 3, negative 2, when we flip it over, the reciprocal of 2, or of negative 2, pardon me, is negative a half. I'm expecting the reciprocal to have a point here. Here where my curve is negative 1-ish, right, somewhere in there. When I put 1 over it, it's not going to move. The other curve is also going to be right there, because 1 over negative 1 is still negative 1. That's why they're called invariant points. Now, there are a couple other things that are going to happen here. Um, and we're going to go back to our chart. There's my face again. Now, all right, let's find our invariant points because they're wonderful things. To find invariant points, take your function. And you're going to set it equal to 1 and solve it, and you're going to set it equal to negative 1 and solve it. So we want to know where does x squared plus 6x oops, plus 7 equal 1. Well, I'm going to move the 1 and then We've got a new quadratic to solve, right? It's not gonna, it's, these are not gonna be quick questions. What are we gonna do? It doesn't factor, quadratic function, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2, 36 minus 24 is going to be 12, which is 2 root 3, reduced by the 2, I've done those a lot. You'll get there too. We also want to know where. <laughs> Quit putting extra squares in there. Where's this equal negative one? I move the negative one. Doesn't factor. Yes, it does. Does it? Sure, it does. Now notice, we have four x values here. There are four invariant points on this graph, four different places where y ends up 1 or negative 1. This mess down here, negative 3 plus root 3, and negative 3 minus root 3.
Okay, so there, these two came from when y is 1. So these are the points negative 1.271 and negative 4.71. <coughs> Those all look the same. <coughs> these came from when y was negative 1. So these are negative 2, negative 1, and negative 4, negative 1. There are the four points that you would list in here. Those are your invariant points because those are on both graphs. So let's have a peek at those over in Desmos for a second. I'm going to look specifically at the negative 2, negative 1. There's negative 2, negative 1. And there's the negative 4, negative 1 that I was talking about before. Those points are also going to be on the reciprocal function. So they're going to act as anchors. <coughs> and in fact, I'm going to go like this and say, I know negative 4, negative 1. It's a point. Negative 2, negative. I predicted that negative 3, negative 1 half should end up on the new curve. <coughs> and you can start to see that there's a shape coming, right? What else do we need to know about this function? All sorts of stuff. And we need to talk about what asymptotes are. When we put one over a number, it changes, obviously. Like, um, if I have 10, I put one over, I get a tiny little one-tenth. The bigger the bottom of a fraction is, the smaller the value of the whole fraction is. Really important as we go, because we're going to have to look for trends. There is one number, however, that's a catch. There's a number we cannot put one over and get a value. If you try and divide 1 by 0, it falls apart. So, interestingly enough, <clears throat> because our x-intercepts, and actually let's get that out of the way, where our x-intercepts are, here and here, I can't put one over and get a number. That's the location of something called an asymptote. An asymptote is basically a fence. So I'm going to put negative 4.414. as an asymptote. This one over here, 4586. Oh, but I need a negative in front of that. Those are asymptotes. Bang. Those are fences that the reciprocal function won't touch. It might get closer and closer and closer to it, but it's like an electric fence. And if it, yeah, you know, it's going to try and get there, but don't touch. Asymptotes are bad. So in between our asymptotes, this little piece, let me switch to a pen, of the curve that's shaped like this is going to flip over. This is going to be the new vertex, and it's going to go down like this. Okay? On the outside, where I have this, which is starting at really, really big values and approaching little values. One over a really big number is little. One over a little number is big. So instead of decreasing, this has to somehow end up increasing. The, the little things to remember, this piece of the graph, this leg on this side, is all positive y values. They're all above that x-axis. They're all positive. So when I put one over it, it stays positive. The reciprocal function won't fall down here then, because that's where y is negative. So where does it flip where's its anchor remember we have two more invariant points those invariant points are going to be a part of this other curve so what's going to happen here is this is going to end up hitting that point which is very poorly drawn and then it's going to go up here like this this side's going to come down here do, 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 do. same reason hit that and then go this way because we're taking very very small y values here and putting one over them which makes them big and up there. But it doesn't hit that asymptote, it just gets closer and closer to it. As we get out here and the y values get really, really big on the original curve, one over makes them really, really small. As they approach the x-axis, which also becomes an asymptote of 
as the carry on out there because we never get it to be zero. It approaches it, but doesn't get there. If you take calculus, you'll learn all about that whole idea of approaching something and not quite getting to it. So before I go back to our worksheet, I'm going to turn on the reciprocal function so you can see, and it would help if I did that with an arrow, a much better version of it than what I was just doodling. And let me delete some of this other, or maybe not. Let's leave it there. So there's a blue line in the background that was our original parabola. The vertical green lines are our asymptotes. So the fences that the new reciprocal function, that's the purple curve, doesn't touch. And it ends up in three pieces. Now, if we went to talk about something like the domain, the X values aren't all used anymore. The asymptotes are those X values that we can't use. So if, when we state our domain, we have to make sure we say all of the X except these. Y values, if you have a look at what Y values are used for these top pieces of the curve on, oops. And for these pieces out here, those Y values are everything above zero. Here as well, the Y values are everything above zero. For this, remember we had this vertex of sorts. It's not a really a parabola now, but we know that point and we know the Y values for it are from there down. So our range is also going to have two sets of values that have to go together to describe all of the values that are used. <coughs> so what do we know? Asymptotes. And let's get some of this out of the way. And let's grab a pen on this screen. Asymptotes come from x-intercepts. Asymptotes are vertical lines typically or horizontal lines. They're never angled or any of that for what we are doing in this course. Yes, there are functions that have all sorts of weird shapes of asymptotes, but we don't get there. We know that there are two vertical lines, one at x equals negative 3 plus root 2, one at x equals negative 3 minus root 2. There's our, our asymptotes. X-intercepts. Our new reciprocal function never touches that x-axis. Some will. This one does not. There are none. Y-intercept. And again, how would you find that? Put 0 in for x, right? I can go all the way down here. Our reciprocal function is really 1 over... So to find my y-intercept, if I put 0 in for x, I find out that this hits the y-axis at 0, 1 7th, which we'll go look at the graph in a second, but I'm going to put that in here so I don't forget. And now have a look at your two y-intercepts. There's your reciprocal, right? So my, my old y-intercept... Uh, for the blue curve, my y-intercept was, how can I get there without making a total mess of it? Here we go. Oh, come on. Here we go. It was 7. Okay, there was my y-intercept. On my reciprocal function, it's at 1 7th because it's just one over that function to get the new y value. Domain. Okay, crazy domain. If you want, if you're panicking, uh, don't clear screen. There we go. If you're panicking and you want to go for part marks at, the, at that point on a test, for instance, at least do this. Because it's a part of your answer. Same here. We know this. That tells me that you know you're looking at x values, but after that you're not sure. Let's look at our x values again for this function. <clears throat> Does it include them all? No, we said it didn't include where the asymptotes are. All the other x values are being used. So x cannot be. Where are my asymptotes? They're at the intercepts of the original function. It can't be negative 3 plus or minus root 2. Which how about? There we go. I'll move this to the middle of the screen a little bit better. 
So there's my domain. Now my range is everything above zero. That was easy. It doesn't ever equal zero. Y is greater than or equal to, or greater than zero. Or if you think about this point that we had right here, the worth of Y value of negative one half and Y does get to be negative one half. So it's less than or equal to negative 0.5. And there's your range. And there's everything to do with this. And you would be drawing that. Now, don't be afraid to hop on Desmos and go look, is this what in the world I'm supposed to be aiming for? Because I want you to make sure you understand. And if I sat you in a room without a computer, that eventually you could sketch that. It's important to, to get a feel for just what happens as we put one over it. So that when you get to calculus, it all makes sense when we start talking about limits, which are wonderful things.